Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 18 Hasu League round of eight. And this is going to be by Agster versus Klauso. I have not seen Klauso before. Irob, who is hanging out in Twitch land, shout out to him, lets me know that he is a strong Terran from Germany and he's got very good vulture control. He has a good harass and a mix of harass and offensive play. So we'll see what by oops. See what Byaxter has. Byaxter starting upper left hand corner as the red Proto or sorry, bottom left hand corner is the red Protoss, upper left hand corner Klauso. So even though <laughs> red Klauso, but orange on Polypoid. I will be interested to see because Klauso I have so people this is the problem without like here's the thing. I'm I'm not a good pro I'm not a good brood war player. I don't play on the ladder, mostly because of lack of time and because I'm bad, and it would take me a lot of time. Basically, I would have to spend the time I would be doing commentary, which is really what I enjoy. Uh, this is kind of the way I look at it. And you guys can disagree or whatever, and that's fine. Like, I could spend time getting better at Brood War, but I don't feel like it would improve my commentary. Instead, I feel like it would take a lot of... Like, when I've done it in the past, I don't feel like it improved my commentary. I feel like it gave me more of a flat affect. Because I think that's kind of my response to this, is it's kind of just, like, don't get emotionally engaged in uh, these sort of situations. But also... I feel like having a little bit of not knowing adds some excitement and mystery to me, where it's like, I don't know how this engagement's going to go, which I think improves my commentary. If people disagree, let me know. But part of it, I think, is also what you're looking for in a commentary, and I think a lot of people are looking for, like, hey, he's going to be able to tell me stuff definitively to get better. For that, go to see Jayun, uh, talk to Gypsy, CPL, places those locations. Here, I'm primarily trying to cast for entertainment. So that being said, I end up with this gap, however where I don't, there are great ladder players out there that I'm unfamiliar with because they haven't been in the Broodwork Clan League, they haven't been in uh, previous seasons of Hustle League, things like that. And so I end up with gaps in my knowledge. And so Klauso, I'm sure, is a fantastic player. It's just gap in the knowledge because mostly I am covering, uh, watching what I can and covering this, but I'm sure he's great. Part of Team Red, though, maybe. And Red, a very good group, and I know a lot of the other members in Team Red. Check out their logo sometime. It's uh, pretty amusing. Anyway, Byagster going to get a uh, scout upper left-hand corner. Thank you, Rob, for the comment in chat, by the way. Uh, we'll get a scout. Going to harass that SCV immediately. And it looks like we are going to see a factory opener here from Klauso. SCV being dedicated to try to push that probe out. That probe vicious, getting a lot of... You can see Rob, Or sorry, you can see Byagster really wanting to get that kill and slow that factory down. In the meantime, we are seeing a quick range... <laughs> Dragoon play rather than uh, Nexus play. I kind of actually like the more aggressive Dragoon style on Polypoid and larger maps to again try to get for uh, try to play a little bit more defensively against the early Vulture. Probe making its way out. It's damaged but it's got to feel good about itself. Man should get that ACV down to 15 health and give Klaus something to think about. We do have the SCV starting to make its way bottom left and corner. First Dragoon out. Is it going to just head up or is it going to engage? Doesn't look like it's going to blockade the ramp. The probe waiting to maybe blockade. Unfortunately, because it's down on base health, might be able to be evicted by that SCV before that Dragoon's able to provide some support. Does Klausa realize it though and engage? Never mind. Going to be able to sneak by regardless. See that it's one gate. So Dragoon presses up. We do not have... So this is a losing situation for this Dragoon. We do not have a bunker yet though. And so the three... Three Marines and the Vulture chasing this down. Do we have a... It looks like we have a machine shot building uh, behind it. SCV has taken some damage and is going to peel back out. It looks like it's just going to be two Dragoon into expansion rather than like one Dragoon into expansion upon seeing that Vulture. I think this is kind of like more the safe... The safe standard follow-up play. Range is going to finish. And honestly, this is a little bit of trouble maybe for Klauso. Depending on, never mind, the Dragoons are going to hold short. If the Dragoons had pressed, they might have been able to get here and maybe picked off a Marine or two before they were able to get in the bunker as range was already complete. But it looks like Byaxer doesn't want to overextend. The Vulture is going to be able to escape out to the corner. We have mines in that siege tank constructed behind this. Command Center is actually going to end up uh, well ahead of that Nexus, so Klauso is going to end up with the early economic lead. Second gateway dropped. On top of it, the Vulture trying to sneak around the corner is going to find an exposed natural expansion, but not going to find a worker there. Already, The worker already moving up to the 9 o'clock base. 
I'm wondering if, if this is just going to be a preventative pylon drop to see if a dropship was making the way across in lack of information, or if this is going to be a quick third base. This is a very risky third base to take, though, expanding into your Terran opponent. We do have the armory being built upper left-hand corner. Uh, mine's just about finished. And the Dragoons have not... Yeah, so it looks like it's just going to be a defensive pylon. I presume that probe going to make its way out to the 12 o'clock as well. There is a world where the probe tries to make its way all the way in and see what's there. Mine planted on low ground, going to go ahead and block out, uh, block out the mineral only as well. But yeah, early economic lead to Klauso overall. And look at this, four marines and two siege tanks with the vulture along the edge. Ooh, and that is huge. This is disastrous now for Biaxer. He's got two dragoons that are at lower health and he's not spotted this army incoming. With this positioning though, he still might be okay to engage a lot of this. Yeah, a lot of the Marines getting wiped out. He's got plenty of Dragoons. He didn't overextend, so it's basically just donating a lot of Marines to the front in response, but there was a, a potential risk right there where some Dragoons got taken out, and that would have been a different engagement. Baxter's still playing very defensively at this stage, and really sealing up around those two bases, and hasn't made movements towards a third base as of yet. Some mines getting planted across the peripheral edge. Do we have a robotics out as of yet? We do have the robotics and observers being constructed. And we have, it looks like he was hoping to take the mineral only. It's kind of telegraphed, so the mines spotting the probe right there and kind of telegraphing. So Klauso already staging up to go ahead and grab a quick third at his mineral only, recognizing that Biaxer playing a much more defensive quick three base style. And so he's gonna end up potentially staying ahead of this. Interestingly enough, Klauso very close in supply. Did lose those marines, but still had that slight economic edge, and the vultures really haven't been contested, and it looks like they're going to have speed and be able to get out on the map and maybe do a lot of mind control. Not mind control, but mind control. So, third base getting built. The observer is starting to move out to kind of see what the situation is. See some vultures darting ahead and some minefields that already need to get cleared. The pylon going to get cleared out there at the 9 o'clock. Second Factory is up and second machine shops being dropped. But it looks like Klauso has already started that third command center. The observer has moved up and seen it. But is by does by extra feel confident in like it's, he's been sitting on two gateways for quite some time. Does he feel confident to deal with it? And also, yeah, no siege mode for this entire time. So tanks are not siege. I don't know if Biaxter is going to recognize that, that we've got siege tanks underneath here, but without siege mode. But this is a full control group of Dragoons. Needs to pull that Observer back to go ahead and clear out the mine, but might be able to threaten this third, because Klaus is playing very, very aggressive style thus far. And honestly, without siege tech, yeah. Might be able to move in, maybe even get some siege tank kills. Bunker being built with no Marines. Okay, finally sieging. Bunker canceled. Biaxer are going to back off. Now the question is, is Biaxer has some minerals to float? Looks like he is going to go for what I presume is going to be three base Arbiter, rather than trying to tack on a quick fourth. He's got a defensive shuttle out just in case. I don't think Klauso, off just the two factories earlier, is going to go for... He is going up to four factories to kind of have that flexibility. <clears throat> but I think this is still a stage back, get your upgrades play here off the three bases. Wondering if the siege mode was uh, forgotten last second, but that was kind of lucky on Klauso getting it. It could have been calculated saying like, you know what, I see that third base, let me just go grab a third. Starport being built uh, a little bit late. So there is going to be a slight delay on movement towards plus two for Klauso, but the Vulture is out on the map. And by Axe, you're playing a very, very contained game. It looks like he maybe is thinking about grabbing the six o'clock. We The Vulture is... Moving out and grabbing it. Well, we've planted a few mines. Haven't gotten in position to really detect it. By extra playing this very, very carefully. A Corsair being built. So never mind what I said. Where I was saying like, oh yeah, very careful. Fleet Beacon Corsair play for Biaxter. So Biaxter wants to go for... Uh, we'll see how this plays. I think this the best version of this is... So we do have the Templar... Or sorry, the uh, Citadel of Dune being built behind this. I do think the best version of this is a combination of 
defense matrix with zealots running around, uh, getting in close proximity, and even though they stand around for a bit, they can create some havoc as Siege Snake's trying to retreat. So you get kind of dragoons that are able to attack. So if you can find a good engagement point, drop some defense matrix on the siege tanks, nullifying them. You can sweep in with the dragoons, create some chaos, etc. I don't know that Klaus is going to be expecting this. In the meantime, it looks like the six o'clock base has been slightly breached by the vultures. I don't think they're going to be able to kill this nexus, and these dragoons should be able to sweep in and handle this without too much trouble. So a little bit of annoyance. Mostly, it's going to be information for Klaus, so that it is f four bases. But I can't imagine that he's going to be expecting. I can't imagine he's going to be expecting Corsair. As far as a turnaround. In the meantime, wow, Klauso. So these defense matrix are going to have to be... Or what am I saying defense matrix? Defense... Uh, D-Web. Defense web. Is what it is. I see it so rarely that my brain isn't computing the right... And also, I am doing sick, sick commentaries here today. So give me a break every... No, anyway. We got uh, eight gateways. As though you guys were even contesting that. Making enemies out of nowhere. I'm just going to declare that they exist and counter them <laughs> before they do. Uh, third machine shop getting dropped. A lot of factories and an economy to work with uh, from Klaus. So again, it looks like he's just been sitting on... Uh, no, canceling the third machine shop. He's just been sitting on the single armory, which I can't remember what the key is to get rid of this upper left. But Klaus is going to grab that 12 o'clock. The Corsair count has grown. Uh, yeah, this is going to be... We're going to see D-Web Corsair. That's the only play. Because I don't think he's expecting like a bunch of Wraith or dropships, but Klauso moving out. Is it going to be enough? Is it, is it going to be in time is the next question. I'm a bit concerned. Alright, so... Klauso pressing in. He's... Byaxer does have 20 supply to work with, but he doesn't have really the concavity. Corsair is now moving out. One of them, at least, has energy. Few of them have energy. But they're not yet engaging. Was it upgraded? It wasn't upgraded yet. So Bayaxter is just going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. He has snuck the Corsair to a defensive position. Nice clearing. Considering that he was, like, down. So this was a big investment. Never mind. He hasn't cleared it yet. This might be a... So I'm, I'm calling it a little bit too early here. Three siege tanks, some vultures... And some Goliath still there. D-Web might finish in the meantime, and that could swing this fight. I think it will swing this fight. But in the meantime, Klauso is getting that 12 o'clock base up uncontested. And already has an aggressive forward stance. Did he, com did he comp sat and see the Corsair? He's got some Goliaths in between here. Really, the important thing is just to remain unseaged. Mines in between, creating some trouble. Byxer's going to have to... I think he's waiting for these tanks to, to siege on that forward edge. Are the Corsairs going to get involved? Did Klauso... Did Byxer... Okay, now we go. So Zealot's clearing it. We got D-Web on the forward edge. The Goliaths able to take several of them out. And unfortunately, yeah, I think Klauso just has too much. So the defense matrix was cute. But now they're just unseaging, walking right underneath it. Are they going to get another defense? But yeah, another one. Planted. So Byxter showing some creativity, but he's still uh, about even in supply, and that's putting Klaus ahead. The one advantage here, he is going to be able to clear this out. The one advantage, however, is that the upgrades have been slow, and it's only been that one armory. But Klaus are not done yet, continuing to press in. He's got a lot of factories to back this up, and keep in mind that's allowing that 12 o'clock base to hum a little bit oversaturated on the gas right there. Baxter looks like he's going to be able to clear this. So Klauso potentially over-aggressive now. But, and has lost a lot of siege tank. But uh, honestly, I don't know that he's out of this yet. So we got a handful of troops. So four base production from Baxter. He's even in supply. Which isn't as bad as it would be usually. Because it's only plus one weapons. And plus one armor at this stage. But this is still a massive factory count. Chugging away, and four base Terran. More siege tank. Do we have a third machine shop again? No, we still are sitting on two machine shops. The Corsair production not stopping, though. 
So Byaxter wants to win this with his air fleet. Observers getting picked off here and there. Sweeping to the north. Some vultures clearing through. In the meantime, plus one weapons is finished and plus two weapons on the way for Byaxter. So he's got to rely on that D-Web and the Dragoon range to play out for him. He has managed to clear it and hold this territory and he's got a 10 supply lead though. Not exact, and not entirely where you want to be at. You usually want to be like 20 supply ahead. But that D-Web might... Especially the D-Web and the smaller Siege Tank count than usual at this stage because of the earlier aggression might play differently. So Klaus are pressing in. Byaxter is grabbing bottom right in the meantime. D-Web on that forward Siege Tank. Second Siege Tank. Yeah, D-Web. So it's basically just Goliaths. And these two Siege Tanks not even in the fight. So by Axter losing a lot of zealots to the, the vultures on the forward field, so bleeding a lot of zealots off, but now all of a sudden has the supply lead, the deep web working against him briefly. As he backs up and restages. Also, keep in mind as far as the supply counts, you have to deduct the four Corsair out of what would be a usual ground army. Also, continuing to flood the vultures out, he's got a looks like a siege tank staging line. Has found some troops bottom right. Is sweeping with everything that direction. Byaxer with some nice movement to go ahead and engage it. He does not have... The other problem with the web is that can often the Corsair production can cut into gas. And so oftentimes you don't have the observers. As many observers to clear for. This observer lagging a bit. The Vulture's trying to sweep around and wipe this out. This is potentially going to be close because this is a massive amount of Vultures. If they focus fire that Nexus, they might be able to get it. The Dragoon's sweeping in. Looks like the Vultures are getting distracted. They're just going to try to exit top right. So Klaso, yeah, living up to uh, what Irob said, very, very aggressive through all stages. And he's going to remove, he's going to move right back out. With So now that he's got an army preoccupied bottom right, is going to restage and re-engage back towards that natural expansion. And this is as workers are trying to make their way across the bottom right. We do have some High Templar finally fielding. Do the Corsair have enough to make the difference here? A bit of D-Web dropped here and there. Only covering a single siege tank, however. And unfortunately, it was double D-Web on that forward siege tank. Very good spread on the siege tanks overall. That High Templar mostly a target to get in the way right this second. The follow-up D-Web great to the north. But unfortunately for Byaxter, well, never mind. Byaxter is able to rebuild. He's doing a great job macroing to rebuild and stave off this aggression. And in the meantime, Colossus is not grabbing an additional base. His main is just about mined out. His natural expansion is somewhat thin. He took that third fairly early, so that third is not looking as plush as it once did. The 12 o'clock is still running fairly fairly well. We have missile turrets. I don't know that missile turrets are the counter to this. It does absorb a D-Web potentially. So two more D-Webs dropped around the opposite corner. The Zealot's able to march in. We're going to get some mind drags. Oh, unfortunately went the right, wrong direction for Byaxter's favor. So the Zealot's pressing all the way across and it look at a battle probe. Going to be able to clear a lot of this trooping up. Are the Corsair going to be able to exit right back out though? Run, Corsair, run! By extra regathering, still maintaining that 12 supply lead. We do have some SCVs top right to maybe grab some additional bases. I think Klaus has got one or two additional attacks. It looks like the Vultures able to stymie some uh, expansion efforts and find some probes that were exposed on the corner. The Dragoons a little bit red-faced, both in color and otherwise. An over-dedication of troops, though, for Byaxer. And are we going to see Klaus go again? Yeah, Klaus Moving up the troops again towards that natural. Looks like Byaxer did hold short now that he got it cleared out. Byaxer going to take bottom right. And Klauso once again engaging. This is... This reminds me of like Goku's style of play. Or just really like sludge fist. Hammering things in. Those tanks not sieged. The Zelts able to get some good sweep. Now they're sieging. But they're sieging right on top of some Psy Storm. And we have a D-Web available. In a moment, looks like it's not even going to be necessary. So Klauso has that wiped out. And now he's got to worry about being able to defend what he's got. Because the third just about mined out. The main just about mined out. And that natural, all three are going to mine out very, very rapidly. He's still down 20 supply. He hasn't stopped 
I guess by extra mining out on a couple of these expansions as well. But he's got the six o'clock, the natural expansion bottom right, and the natural, and the, I'm sorry, the main bottom right that he's going to be able to fill right back in. Some vultures trying to sweep through and get some value somewhere. Might get collapsed on on either edge. It looks like Siege Shank's making the way bottom right. And so I think Klauso's got another attack or two. Starting to press in. That Nexus is weakened from earlier. Unseaging those Dragoons trying to desperately quickly clear that minefield from the rear. They focus fire that Nexus. That might be a big victory and keep Klauso in this match. Siege Shank getting picked off. The Corsair making their way this direction. Looks like they're again not going to drop the D-Web because not enough Siege Shanks to really make up for it. Now, Biaxter is going to have to do, again, the, the pivot reaction. Just dedicate a few troops to deal with the Vultures there and get back to his natural expansion to defend it. He's also trying to expand to the 9 o'clock. Klauso is grabbing a mineral only and maybe going to try to grab top right. And then use defense to... It looks like he's catching a lot of probes as they're trying to make transition. Nearly 200 supply for Biaxter, by the way, where Klaus has still been sitting around the 150 mark. A lot of mines cutting off the infrastructure, and it looks like that Observer is going to be able to detect, th detect that expansion top right. Dragoons on the spot. So now it's a really dangerous time for Glauso, in my opinion. because So that's mined out, that's mined out, his third's mined out. So he's got a base not yet up, and one, one more base, and he's got an active attack force out in the field. He's down on supply. He does have level 3 weapons, level 2 armor, though. There's a lot of High Templar out here. He's still pressing into that natural expansion. I think if by extra defense here is able to clear this out. Ooh, Sai storming a lot of the science vessels on top of it. They're wiped out. The Siege Shank's able to get on top of that Ford Siege Shank line. And ooh, Sai Storm blanketing everything. And I think that might be the moment that swung it. Potentially to by Axter's favor. Even though supplies are not showing that. Yeah, the supply immediately refilling. Because Klauso... Now at a siege tanks, he's gonna be down. You can he's gonna be down on resources for a bit of time. So he's got his bank basically to work with, and he's gonna have to replenish. But if he he's still continuing to go for it, moving the siege tanks bottom left, and he's just gonna yeah make his offense his defense. So I take it back where I thought that would be a swing for Byaxter. Byaxter having some trouble, maybe because he wasn't able to get the probes here bottom right. So he's got that the three bases up, but not yet saturated. He's got a lot of these probes sitting here waiting. So ignore what I was saying. Klauso still staying in this. Pushing up. Supply counts are suddenly even. Defense matrix... Or sorry, D-Web on the ground. Some mines in between. That is going to open up some size storm. The tank's trying to unsiege and make their way back out of this. A lot of High Templar are dying in the midst of this. And all of a sudden, Biax are actually down in supply. So 12 o'clock base is humming. Mineral only summing. Upper right hand base is getting established from Klauso. It's we got the nine o'clock there, but it's not yet up, not yet saturated. Bottom right is me is not very saturated here for Biaxer. That's kind of the trouble he's running into. So I was kind of presuming. Let's see if these workers are able to make their way bottom right. I was presuming that bottom right was saturated and Biaxer would be able to keep up with it. But Klauso's continued aggression now finally paying off because there's not a lot of dragoons left. And now he's finally going to be able to breach and cut off the main from the rest of these expansions. Byaxter's going to either need to rebuild bottom right or I don't know what uh, from here. Just relentless aggression from Klauso and really making it pay off because these bases have been untouched this entire time behind it. Byaxter really hasn't had an opportunity to flood out and do anything about it. And with the siege tanks covering their treat, Klaus are going to to regroup up and go for an attack. Is he going to aim for the six o'clock or the natural? Is the question. So dropping some mines, pushing those siege tanks in, and it looks like he's just going to press into that natural expansion. Klauso with a very aggressive, continual pressing style, and I like it. It's going to end up giving him victory here in game one. So Nexus quickly going to drop. We have some follow-up troops going to wipe out an empty Nexus here at the 9 o'clock location. But these are resources that Byaxter could not afford to lose. And Klaus, in the meantime, saturating top right. So he's staying on that three base and going to be able to keep that... Uh, going to be able to keep the 
army rolling and funded. Funded, fed, shiny, gonna have polish for the vultures. They like that, I'm sure. Probes exposed bottom right. The Dragoon's trying to clear things out, but gonna call GG. That was very well played from Klauso. Great play, enjoyed seeing it. A creative play from Byaxter going for the D-Web. Didn't pay out. Keep calling it Defense Matrix for some reason. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for listening.